Good morning and how are you? Great to see you. It's not often I come back and revisit a wine I've made previously, but I want to share an update with you because I didn't do a taste test. I did try to do a taste test of this wine, but the audio was dire and I had to scrap the whole video. So I want to come back, amend the recipe a bit and then do a further taste test of this wine down the track with you, with good audio, so you can watch and see and see if you want to make this wine. This wine was a big surprise to me. I thought it was going to be one of those complete experiments where it fails. I don't like the raw ingredient, didn't think it's going to make a great wine, but it turned out to be one of the best white wines I've made ever. And that wine is Semolino wine. I can't stand this stuff. It reminds me of hospital foods, old people's homes, and you wouldn't think a wine made from durum wheat and sugar would be good at all. In my original video up by here, I used just under one and a half kilos of semolina because Dee bought a big bag of it, didn't like it. So I just shoved a whole lot into a fermentation bucket. But I think I used way too much semolina. I had it, so I used it. But to repeat the recipe, to amend it and take it further, to keep the cost down, keep it more efficient, more cost effective. This recipe that we are doing today uses only 500 grams of semolina. That's one standard box you can buy off the supermarket shelves. Yes, it is a very bizarre wine. I love to experiment with flavours and different tastes, and hopefully you do as well. For this recipe, you're going to need a fermentation vessel, a big bucket. Make sure your bucket is sanitised before you begin. As always, keep all of your equipment as sanitised and as clean as you can. So into your fermentation bucket, you want to pour in your semolina. This wine does clear quite quickly and mature quite well. It's a three month wine. If you see it that you make it now, three months time, you'll have a beautiful wine, then that is fantastic. And to be honest, I was very, very surprised with this. I had low expectations, but this wine really blitzed them out of the water. That's why I'm making it again. If it wasn't any good, I would have just buried that video, forgotten all about it but it is so good, I want to make another Gadden batch. And it was also one of Dee's favourite wines as well, of all time. Happy wife, happy days. And then on top of your semolina, in your fermentation bucket, you want to pour over 1.2 kilograms of granulated sugar. The semolina lacks nutrients, it lacks fermentable sugar. So you want to add a bit more sugar, 1.2 kilograms, to make up for the lack of substance of the flavouring, the semolina in your bucket. Because the semolina, as I've just said, lacks some of the nutrients and acidity to help the yeast work, you want to add a quarter of a cup of lemon juice, or the juice of one whole lemon. Pour that in. This is a really simple, low cost, effective wine to make. And it's one of those that's so unusual, your guests will never have heard of it before. They will be so surprised and shocked when you tell them that their wine they're drinking and enjoying is made of semolina. It is rather baffling how unusual, quirky ingredients do make wonderful wines. And why are people not making more of these wines? On top of your sugar, lemon juice and semolina, you want to pour over two litres of boiling water to get that sugar dissolved and that semolina soaking. And then give it a really good stir. Get all those ingredients dissolved and working together. If you find you need a bit more boiling water to get things dissolved, boil up some more and add it. And then you want to top it up to the one gallon mark. So add another two and a half liters of cold water. The cold water will bring the temperature right the way down so that you can add the yeast more quickly. 
and then give it another really good stir. Get all the ingredients becoming friends. At this stage, it looks a horrible, murky colour, but it will clear to be bright, beautiful, perfect in the glass, an oaky, rich, straw-like colour. And with that temperature being cool enough now, you can add your general purpose wine yeast. If your wine yeast that you use doesn't come with yeast nutrients added to the packet, add some yeast nutrients. Because that semolina is not very rich in nutrients that the yeast needs to thrive and do well. So to add your wine yeast, it's as simple as that. I think using less semolina will produce a better wine than the wine I made previously. So I will amend my recipe based on the outcomes of this wine. Wine making is all about experimentation, trial and error, seeing what works and what doesn't work. So you want to follow the basic guidelines and there are only guidelines. So now you want to put a lid on your bucket, let this stand to ferment for about three or four days. And then I'll be back with you and we will carry on with this recipe. Fantastic. See you soon. Hello and welcome back to the next bit of the semolina wine recipe. Sorry about the lighting conditions in here. Bit of a power issue to the shipping container, so I'm using a battery operated light. Not ideal, but the best I can rummage up right now. Anyway, semolina wine. It's been stood for three days and I've been stirring it every day. Getting that semolina, the durum wheat, mixed into the liquid, into the water. I gave it a final stir last night and let it settle. So now there's a layer of semolina at the bottom of the bucket with a liquid on top. So all we need to do now is siphon the liquid off of the semolina and into a clean, sanitised, sterilised demijohn. Simply a case of suck it through your siphon tube into the demijohn and hey ho. So I'm going to do this now and I'll be back with a full demijohn. Whilst I'm sucking up the semolina wine, I am just thinking about the last batch I made with a kilo and a half of semolina. Way too much, I think, in my opinion. I'm just hoping that 500 grams is going to be spot on. It should be. It was such an amazing, wonderful wine, the last batch I made, and I can't wait to try this batch. Just try not to get that semolina into the demijohn. If you do, it's not the end of the world. It will fall to the bottom and you can rack it off at a later date. Oh, and there we have it. That is going to clear beautifully bright and sparkly. So all we need to do now is put an airlock into the demijohn and let it stand in a warm place to carry on fermenting. So I apologise about the wind, the rain and the light, but hopefully you'll join me for the taste test of this wine when it comes out. So you have fun now and I'll see you all soon.